Well, putting the kids to bed can turn into a nightmare for some parents, but here's some new information about routines that could help motivate your efforts. A new study found preschool aged children who didn't have a set sleep routine were more likely to be overweight by the time they became tweens. Now to explain and give some uh, stressed out parents some good advice here, Dr. Elizabeth Mead joining us once again. Good morning. Uh, you know, tell us about this study linking sleep and weight. It's pretty interesting here. It is interesting. So this was a study in the UK and they asked parents at different time points in the child's life about their sleep routines. And then when they looked back, they found that kids who had had inconsistent bedtimes growing up were almost twice as likely to be obese by the time they were age 11. What's the science behind that? I mean, what, how does this routine prevent obesity? Well, we don't know that it does. So okay. this is not a study that proves causation. So okay. it doesn't prove that having an inconsistent bedtime directly leads to obesity. It just proves that the two things are linked. And we've certainly seen this in other studies in the past, that kids who have consistent bedtimes, consistent meal times, and good routines have a much decreased risk of obesity compared to other kids. Okay, so there's not really a correlation between having a set bedtime and, and how it affects weight. Well, there may be some. Okay. So we definitely know that when we look at studies of like adult shift workers who work the graveyard shift or overnights, right. that they have a much de increased risk of obesity. And we think that it's because it probably disrupts your circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. And those are actually really important for regulating weight and different things. What other benefits do families get uh, from a daily routine? I know in, in my household, yeah. uh, you know, my wife is fantastic at this, getting the kids to bed at around 8 or 8.30 so that they get all the hours of sleep. But I know some families as well who kind of just let their kids kind of stay up until 10 or something. What's, 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 What's the difference between there? Is it obviously better to get them into a routine? Right? A routine is great. So yeah. kids do much better with a routine really at every age. I mean, this goes from babyhood all the way through teenagers. So they do much better when they have a routine. It's really important that kids get enough sleep. And yeah. I think all parents know that if they don't, <laughs> your day can be a disaster, right? And so having a consistent bedtime and making sure that it's far enough before they have to get up yeah. is extremely important for behavior and general health and happiness of the family. Uh, we were talking about this before we got into this interview. You, but obviously now with the time change, 8.30 yeah. at night is still daylight yeah. out time. Uh, and, you know, honestly, we have a tough time getting our kids to bed around that time. But do you have any p uh, tips for uh, parents try to get them into the routine, perhaps like around 8 or 8.30 or even earlier? Yeah, so I think having things that you do every day at bedtime are really helpful. Okay. So for lots of kids, that's brushing their teeth, reading a book, and then going to bed. That routine can sort of settle their body into thinking, that okay, it's time to go to sleep now. Blackout curtains, especially in oh, this yes. climate, are actually Huge. really helpful. Yeah. And again, for babies all the way through teenagers. Yeah. I have them in my own bedroom. Yeah. Um, I think it's really helpful because it does stay late and we see for a lot of families that when summertime hits especially and there's no school day, the sleep routine completely goes out the window. Yeah. Off, off the topic, I mean, what do you think about sound machines? I know for our, yeah. our, our baby, we use a sound machine, yep. but I, sometimes I use it as well because I, I tend to get up pretty early yeah. as well. But I mean, So they can be really helpful. There have been a few studies that linked sound machines, especially close to the crib in infants with some hearing loss okay. on an ongoing basis. So right. I think that's one thing to keep in mind. But definitely for older kids, and if you put it far enough away from the crib, I think it can be really useful. And you know, what do you recommend for you know, parents who have children that are already obese? Yeah, great question. Yeah. So I think it's really, really important first and foremost to talk with your pediatrician or your family a doctor about yeah. this and about ways to kind of combat that. For most kids, especially younger kids, we don't necessarily want them to lose weight. We just want to slow the rate of gain and mm -hmm. have them kind of grow into the weight that they already have. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, really more important than the number on the scale, we want kids to be healthy. So we want them to get enough physical activity, get a good sleep routine, yeah. make healthy food choices, and be able to do the things that they love. Yeah, don't underestimate the, the importance of sleep because yes. <laughs> if, if I could take it from a parent, have, being a, fa a father of three, yeah. if one of my kids doesn't get enough sleep, they're going to be cranky. Right, be, and one so. kid not getting enough sleep kind of ruins it for all the it kids kinda, sometimes. Exactly. So I think the more you can get on a routine, and it can be really hard with multiple kids sure, in the house, sure. but the more you can get that consistent bedtime for everybody, including ourselves, yeah. the better off we're going to be. Absolutely. Dr. Liz Elizabeth Mead, thanks for joining us once no, again. No Appreciate problem. it. Back over to you.